Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Tekken 10 with Sin. I'm representing SinHardware.com today. Uh, my name is Steve and I'll be looking at the UP4 for you guys today from X79 from Gigabyte. Ultra Durable and 5 entails the IR3550 power stage. You're wondering what the big deal is over this chip. Why these two awards are here. They're both here because of this chip. This was awarded to the IR3550. It's the Electronic Product of the Year Award for 2011. It's International Rectifier for their 60 amp power stage. Basically, blows all the competition away. There's nothing on the motherboard now that can overdo 8 or 6 of these in a row, right? Best of Computex 2012 was awarded to Gigabyte for implementing these power stages on a whole wide variety of their boards. Every UP board you see will use this power stage for a CPU voltage regulator. IR is the one who uh, brought out the direct FET, which is the like uh, silver looking MOSFETs, and they have excellent thermals. They basically took technology from the direct FET, like current going through better routes than the PCB and integrate it into this power stage. Gigabyte complements this power stage with 60 amp inductors. You need the inductor of certain saturation current rating so that you can output that kind of amperage. And they have 60 amp rated inductors. It's very rare to find inductors as high as the current output, possible current output of the MOSFET, but that's what you have here. Here you have two ounce copper PCB because the PCB will also be a limiter to the amount of current. So that's pretty cool. Look on the back, you have all the marketing. You can read this all up on their microsite. Uh, just type in Ultra Durable 5 onto the internet. You'll probably find their marketing site. Uh, some of it's actually pretty educational. You might go on and go in there and read it if you're interested in this. So using a 6 plus 1 plus 1 phase for a CPU, uh, another two phases, all of them are using the power stages in different types. Uh, 2 ounce carbon PCB, all the benefits here. 3D BIOS, 3D power means digital power supply to the CPU voltage regulator as well as the CPU I mean, CPU IO and the CPU SA as well as the two memory banks. Uh, you have eight DIMMs on this board on either side. Let's take a look at the accessories that come with this thing. Alright, so I have them all over here. So you have Gigabyte CD, I mean DVD, then you have the manual over here, you have some uh, IO shield here, right? We can put this over here. Uh, SLI bridge as well as a crossfire bridge. Three-way SLI bridge, crossfire bridge. Or not crossfire, just SLI. You have a gigabyte sticker, case badge, real cool. Uh, four SATA 6 gigabytes per second cables. Um, two of them are in there, in there are angled. Or two of them in both each have one cable that has one angled head. And, ta-da, four-way SLI bridge, one of the harder things to find. And Gigabyte provides it with all their boards capable of four-way, which is something I really like. Now let's take a look at the board, because no doubt you've been waiting for this much more than anything else. Here you go, the UP4. Now the UP4 is a very high-end board um, for what it is. It is an entry-level board, but it is high-end. You have four-way SLI, one, two, three, four. 16x, 8x, 16x, 8x. Um, basically, the native chipset has 40x PCI 3.0 lanes coming from the CPU, and basically 16x, 16x, and then 8x, 8x, I guess, can alternate between these two slots. Or actually, no, it would come from the second 8x of here and be switched up to here. My bad. This is probably always 8x, and this is probably always 16x, and this is probably always 8x. Anyway, so you have 8 DIMMs. One mistake you could buy made on their first generation of boards is they only used two DIMMs on each side. While that still does allow quad channel, a lot of users wanted to just stack up RAM because the DRAM price is just so low now that you can just fill these up and buy like four gigabyte modules and buy two gigabyte modules, basically really cheap. Anyways, so now I'm gonna take you to the back panel because a lot of people like to see this. You have a 7.1 surround sound here uh, coming out from these, SPDIF out, um, optical and uh, coaxial. Then you have, um, right here, you have the PS2 connector, uh, 6 USB 2.0, actually 8 USB 2.0, USB 3.0 right here, and 2 ESATA slots, and a 1394, I'm not 1394, sorry, gigabit ethernet right here. A lot of people are wondering, wow, that's a lot of USB ports. Well, yeah, most devices people have nowadays are USB. They're not anything else. Um, you have a big heatsink right here. 
the cooldown the six phase for the CPU V core. You count seven of them. One of these phases is for the CPU uh, system agent, and this is for the uh, VCC IO, which is your QPI, QPI slash VTT. Memory controllers here and here provide power here. Uh, 40 amps, 10 amps per dim, which is a lot. Uh, digital controller here, here, and here. This is a 6 plus 1, which powers all this. 3 plus 2 gives one here and one here, and this just 3 plus 2 just provides one here. Now, over here and over here, you have a single power stage here, single power stage here, and single power stage here. These are all 40 amp IR3553. Now, Gigabyte used this on their other boards, and the IR3553 is actually a 40 amp variant of the IR3550, which is a 60 amp variant, which is being used under the CPU V core. They actually are different in size. Ugh, look how tough that's on there, right? For excellent thermals. Look how big this is, a single piece, that means the cooling will be optimal, easy for airflow, it has good surface area, and it's not light. Anyway, so you see the beautiful, beautiful power stages here, right? And there's also a Gigabyte's also using a nice back I/O shield for this, and uh, this can cool down the copper in the PCB if needed, but not really with this little thermal pad here. But basically, it holds down this heatsink much better and much stronger than just to the PCB, right? So it's pretty cool. Anyways, you have a lot of output out put capacitor bank right here and that is excellent for containing the ripple however this is six true phases which is not something that can be said for the majority of x79 boards or boards in general now these dims are close to cpu two capacitors on each side is a good sign for overclocking and i'll test that out in my ultimate review 24 pin connector here 8 pin connector here in a decent spot uh, you have fan connector here here and uh, here uh, so you can actually have two to the CPU as well as one to a case here even you can bring this over and bring this over so any way you put it if you need fans around the CPU two of them for push pull that's easily done if you have water cooling then that's easily done too this is excellent spot for a pump so is this and so is this this is an excellent positioning for um, CPU fans or voltage any way you put it it's better than having them all here because then you can also spread them to other parts of the case these are all four pin around the CPU socket. Then we have two other fan connectors, one here, and then one here, here and here. These are three pin uh, voltage mode. So you're looking at the board's features. You have USB 3.0 here provided by FO1009 uh, Fresco Logic USB 3.0 chip. Another Fresco Logic chip here for the two USB port on the back. You have a Marvel SC9172 right here for the two ESATA on the back. You have an Intel NIC right here, which is a physical layer device, and the NIC is actually in the PCH, and that will provide the Gigabit Ethernet. A lot of people love Intel, and Gigabytes use it. You have an ALC898 codec right here that provides a 7.1 surround sound, as well as these SPDIF outputs, as well as audio header here. This little receiver and controller chip here will give you the serial communication port right here. IT8728F provides PS2 on the back as well as all the fan voltage, temperature monitoring, and control of the fans. You have two ES, I mean two internal SATA headers here, which are straight edged, maybe for a back panel thing, or maybe go to your front, or maybe there's easier for you to hit. Uh, they're straight edged instead of angled like this. Uh, gray are Marvel SATA 6 gigabytes per second. Both have their own Marvel. SC9172 controller here for these two and here for these two. They're close, so performance should be good. Native PCH provides four SATA 3 gigabytes per second as well as two native SATA 6 gigabytes per second, right? Let's flip the board over and take a look at this PCB. You see how black this is and how beautiful it is too? There's usually four uh, screws here, but I took two of them off, so it'd be easier for me to remove the PCH. Now, this is the first time removing the PCH heatsink. Um, and it's a good sign that it's just falling off like that because that means that it has some kind of paste on it. Yeah, it does. The paste even made an impression. You can almost you can read the markings on the PCH. Awesome, right? Intel native PCH, Pittsburgh PCH, X79, single phase analog controller for it, but this doesn't matter. Digital, 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 digital. Three-way digital. CPU zone digital, memory zone digital. Both sets of memory. So you have CPU vCore digital, CPU IO digital, and memory digital. That's 3D, right? 3D for three-way digital. I know it's 3D like 3D comics, but not really. Anyway, so 
Um, here you have your SATA ports. These are angled. Remember, we had our straight edge. You have your SA, uh, your PCIe already described. PCI is native to the Z7 X79 Pittsburgh chipset, so this is natively done. So you're not going to have any issues through a PCIe to PCI bridge. So that's awesome. Uh, these 1x ports are also coming from the PCH. The PCH has 8x connectivity for other ports. Two of them here, two of them here, another one here. That's five, six, seven, and another one eight for the NIC. Uh, so using all the native controller ports here for extra I.O. capability. This board also has internal headers USB, USB, USB all 2.0. has a trusted platform module here. These boards are generally used as server boards because X79 is like a server chipset which moved through enthusiasts because of the 6 core variant of the CPU. A lot of users really want a new X79 board. Well, Gigabyte says these boards with Ultra Durable 5 are designed for water cooling. 